so Marty's trying to convince George that he needs to ask Lorraine out, but he goes, no, I, I, I can't, I can't go to the dance that night. I'm going to miss my favorite TV show. So, uh, Marty like science realizes action theater or something mystery science theater. Yes. <laughs> so Marty has to convince him to, to go and ask Lorraine out. So he gets his hazmat suit and he gets his Walkman and he puts him on George and starts blasting Van Halen riffs in his ear. <laughs> I, I am Darth, Darth Vader. Vader. From the planet <laughs> Vulcan. <laughs> Vulcan. <laughs> but this is another scene, man, where it, it shows the 80s so well. Just the Walkman. If if you were around for that time where you saw the big, bulky Walkman with the cassette tapes and the big, furry fucking headphones with the metal part that goes around your head and the Van Halen riff and Darth Vader and Vulcan, it's just perfect so- nostalgic callbacks. So I, from what I understand, it was eventually cut later, but Marty was supposed to knock George out with chloroform, essentially, which is why he the next day, like, wakes up, misses school, like, was so out of it and was like, is that why his shirt's all fucked up and everything? Yeah, like in such a stupor, like "Ah, Darth Vader came down and like chloroformed me and okay, cool. Like now I have to ask Lorraine out. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) What? So so Marty gives him the idea to to go over and you know drop some some words of of pimpdom on his dad to try to get him to hit on his mom. You're my destiny. We we're in there and and it looks like they're going to have a nice moment and of course lo and behold Biff has to fucking walk in and ruin everything. Mhm. Now, speaking of Biff ruining everything, I don't know if you realize this one of Biff's henchmen is actually Billy Zane. Yes. This was yes. this was Billy Zane's uh one of his like earlier acting gigs before he, he was more he's, well known. He's the guy who was in Titanic, the Phantom, right? That guy. Yep. And dude, what's up with those 3D fucking glasses? <laughs> that shit looked dumb even when I was a kid. Why the fuck is he wearing 3D glasses? He's friends with Biff. Are you expecting him to have a high IQ? <laughs> he has such a punchable face, especially with those fucking glasses on, man. We Get to Biff coming in and he's he's trying to kick George out. And of course, Marty steps in and, and punches him in the face. Yes. But that punch, however, is not uh, Michael J. Fox's fist. That is yes. the only scene left in this movie that has Eric Stoltz left in it. That is his yes. his one moment in this movie. He got to punch Biff. You know what, man? For for someone who's supposed to be the big bad bully in the movie. He gets fucking rocked a few times. So many times. <laughs> Dude, he lays out Biff, and it just makes things worse for him because now Lorraine is even more head over heels for Marty. So now she's even more heated for him. And that leads to this really cool action chase scene that the score is fucking fantastic for, by the way. Yes. Uh, and Marty basically invents the skateboard. He there's yeah. like these kids playing with like these uh these boxes with like these wooden handlebars that are looks like roller skate wheels and like he a pulls scooter, the, essentially yeah he pulls the the top part off and it's just the board and wheels and starts skateboarding and Hates everyone's off. like what's he doing what's that so he kind of invents the skateboard too in this movie no not kind of he he fucking invented it <laughs> yes so Biff is chasing him around the square and honestly this is one of my favorite chase scenes. Of all time. It really stands out, though, when he's, like, in the front of the, the car and he can't stop. And then he climbs over the car and jumps back on his board. Yeah. It's... And that's been repeated in so many different movies ever since then. Yeah. But so well done. And, of course, the them just slamming into a, a pile of, of shit and just yeah. dumping into their car. Yep, they just slam into a fucking truck full of horse shit or cow shit and manure and everything. (laughs) And they say, shit! So after all of that, Lorraine is uh, wet, to say the least. (laughs) Very fucking wet. (laughs) Bitch needs a fucking garbage bag around her hips. (laughs) And it'll probably still leak. So she decides to follow (laughs) Marty back to Doc's house. How did you find me? I followed you. (laughs) <laughs> I'm telling you, his parents are fucking perverts and creeps. They were meant to be together because of yes. how just in tune to each other's kinks they are. 
<laughs> so Lorraine shows up and asks Marty to the dance, which now throws a whole monkey wrench into things because he was trying to get his dad to ask her out. So now he has to convince his dad to ask her out and he has to go and set up this whole plan. So he's like, all right, cool. So I'm going to ask her out. I'm going to take her out and I'm going to be a little bit of a, you know, jerk. And she's yeah, yeah. going to be a little mad. Women don't like when you uh, try to take advantage of them and then you're going to come in and save the get, day. Get your damn hands off her and save the day. <laughs> Do I have to swear? Yes, George. Yes. God damn yes. it. Swear. Yes. God damn it, George. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> so they devise this plan. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm not convinced that George is really going to do it. But but Marty lays the 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 line. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Yep. And lo and behold, he he kind of drops that seed into his his father's brain field. Yeah, this is a really another thing that kind of happens as a cause and effect of Marty being there. But this is another I, I I really enjoyed seeing the son and father aspect, but the advice part is flipped, where it's That's the son nice. giving fatherly advice to the father. So it it was kind of it was kind of a cool moment seeing Marty realize that he is almost a father figure in that situation with his dad. A very big role reversal for the two of them where he felt like him and his dad really couldn't connect or didn't have anything to mm -hmm. connect on. This is important. He he needs to connect with his dad or his life depends on it. Yeah, literally. <laughs> we go back to Doc's house and Doc is uh, about to find out about him being shot. Marty writes him a letter to eventually give to him so that he knows – just take some precautions. You might or might not get shot by terrorists. Yeah, but Doc is against knowing about it. He doesn't want to know it. Correct. Uh, because he, he kind of goes into the whole thing about like telling me about my future could change the future. Type if thing. I know too much, then I might not actually do what I'm supposed to do. It's very convenient for the plot. And don't get me wrong. I, there are some plot holes, but it's this movie is the kind of movie where I don't give a fuck. I can just like, ignore them and move along. And the movie's so good that I don't even care. But it's very convenient for the movie where like he's like, no, you can't tell me certain things about the future because that could affect our future and change things. But then so many things happen because of Marty, like the skateboard thing and uh, uh, his his parents meeting. And later on, when he basically he basically writes Johnny be good, like there's a bunch of things that wouldn't have happened if Marty didn't go back to the to the past to begin with. But I guess maybe it was always destined for Marty to go back in time to save the future so th there's the whole like time travel movie headache conundrum but it the, works for the movie so i don't even care the irony for me is that he's saying that he can't learn too much about his future while watching a fucking vhs recorder from the future <laughs> of future events that tell him the future but i can't know too much about the future yes where he just found out about the flux capacitor that it works like two days ago. Hence right. why this whole movie plot is happening. But I don't care. The movie's fucking awesome. Not Ignore it. Move along. I don't care. <laughs> so uh, Marty and Lorraine show up to the dance. They they park for a second and, and Marty's all nervous. And, and Lorraine lets him know, well, this is not my first time parking with a boy. <sighs> Thirsty ass bitch. Well, like excuse before. me, miss. Well, Marty, you think I've never parked before? <laughs> She starts drinking. She starts smoking. This girl is is she's she's on the sauce. She's ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. She's like basically getting naked right there, throws herself all over Marty. And very much so does. They end up kissing yeah. and, and she's like, oh, that feels like I'm kissing my brother. This is kind of weird, which is good because don't worry, Lorraine. It was weird for us, too. As the audience, I felt like I was watching fucking Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill kiss in Star Wars. It was fucking weird. They get interrupted, and of course, it's not George, but it's Biff. <laughs> the, all that 300 bucks damage of his car is getting taken out on Lorraine's ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he fucking yanks him out, fucking 3D glasses, motherfucker, punches him. And they take him away and throw him in the trunk of the, the blues jazz band that's playing at the enchantment dance. Yep. He's like, what are you looking at? This ain't no peep show and slams the door. George, being a little bit late to the party, finally gets out there. And uh, let me tell you, if if there was not a fresh shit in his pants, there should have been because he, he probably he, pooped. 
he stepped up and, and had to to really once he saw Lorraine pop her head back up from from behind that poof of a dress. George, help me. George, please. help me, please. Get back down there. So this is probably my favorite comedic punch ever. Dude, he fucking rocks him so hard. Biff does the fucking I almost pulled my whole laptop off. <laughs> He fucking boom does a three sixty and like, oh, it's such a good punch, dude. Biff gets the shit kicked out of him by both McFlies in this movie, and that was just like the perfect, the perfect ending to him trying to bully both McFlies and getting the shit knocked out of him. <laughs> yeah, because he is essentially not relevant after this point. Marty's still stuck in the the trunk of the car, so the the band is trying to get him out, and the guitar player ends up slicing his hand. So. Yes. Marty's like, well, come on, guys, you got to go play. And he's like, well, unless you know somebody who could play the guitar. Marty could play the well, guitar. Well, look at that. How... <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Yep. <laughs> this is for all you lovers out there. So they get a nice little romantic song to dance to. And uh, Marty is on his last leg. Uh, he starts fading out in the middle of the song, losing his ability to play guitar. He is just mm-hmm. about out of time. Yeah. Pun intended. But he's starting to disappear from the picture and yeah he's literally disappearing his hand is the, starting to disappear. the goofy redhead that put the kick me sign on him earlier had jumped in and and was trying to dance with the rain dude so my man after fucking, even sticking up sticking up to biff almost got his lady taken from him a second yeah time. fucking the shermanator looking motherfucker <laughs> dude he looks just <laughs> like sherman <laughs> sherman comes up and tries to steal George's girl after just knocked out Biff. And he, you think for a second that fucking Sherman's going to take his girl. And then he finally just mushes him in his face, takes Lorraine, t- takes Lorraine in, kisses that bitch. And now Marty's back and he's not ev- evaporating from the picture. So Good on you, George. Fuck Shermanator. I, 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 steal your I was girl not just ready for the- George. No. I was not ready for George to actually step in when I first saw it. I was like, all right, come on. And that's the end of that movie. See you, Marty. Yeah. yeah, but good for George, man. Finally sticks up for himself. He just knocked out the biggest bully in the school, and he's not going to let fucking Shermanator come here and take his and girl take that his he just shit. earned. And so, all is well. He gets the girl. He gets the kiss. Marty doesn't get evaporated. All right. Yep. That part of the of the the problem in the movie is set. Now yes. we just have one last problem. But the band wants him to play one more song. So, all right, yeah. I, I guess we'll play one more song. And I, I guess in the process, Marty takes over the invention of rock and roll from Chuck Berry. Yep. And uh, <laughs> this song is such a classic. Every time I hear it, I, I see him doing the boop, boop, boop with the, with yep. the leg. And oh, yep. it's just mad. Hey, it's, hey, Chuck, it's your cousin, Marvin. Marvin yep. Berry. Yep. And so this is another convenient thing that happens throughout the movie where like they have to watch where they step to not change the the future. But he basically gives Chuck Berry the idea for Johnny be good. Yeah. Oh, 100 (laughs) percent. So in the movie, he invents a skateboard. He writes Johnny be good. Like all this stuff that's happening in the future. Marty's fucking responsible for it. This is my number one complaint with this movie, but I ignore it because, like I said, I ignore the the plot holes and just move on because the movie's great. So Marty gives his parents the idea to name him Marty because they meet Marty when he goes back to the the past. So if Marty didn't go back to the past, would they have named Marty Marty? And why the fuck didn't they name their first child Marty? See, I feel like this is because, another one of those Goldie Wilson situations where, like, it happened already before he went back. So it may have so already he was been always like, sort of to... destined to be like a Martin and uh, eventually like, oh, Marty, like, that's a, a cool name. Like, well, we'll save that name for down the line. Because yeah, yeah, a lot of people's but... biggest gripe with this movie is that, like, OK, you essentially set your parents up. Yeah. How do they not remember you when you go back to the future? And uh, I, I want to say the the director said it this way. Do you remember 
somebody who just moved to your town for a week and then moved exactly. away. You know, like just because they had a giant impact on your life doesn't mean that you remember them. I went on a cruise when yeah. I was 16. Sure, I vaguely remember some of the the people that I was on a cruise with that week, but it, if I were to see them again now, 30 years later, would I go, oh yeah, clearly that's still the same person. Yeah, and the whole concept of of like it actually being the Marty that they knew when they were teenagers, obviously, is completely unheard of and ridiculous right. to even think is a reality. But I'm sure at one point in time, her and George maybe went like, he looks really, he really looks like Marty, like our son. Be. No, I'm not saying that, that they would think yeah. that it was actually that Marty. But, you know, at one point, there was probably a conversation where like, he actually looks like Marty from high school. By the time he got into his teens, it was like, oh, oh. You, which might have made things a little bit awkward for Lorraine. Because <laughs> she probably thinks her son is ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so Marty gets back to the clock tower, meets up with Doc. He goes, do you have any sense of time? Like, you're fucking late, bro. Cutting it yep. close here. Yeah, this is literally probably the most important thing you have to do right now. Otherwise, you won't exist, dude. Well, I mean, technically... He would still exist, I guess, at this point. He just wouldn't get just, back to the future because yeah, 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 they only yeah. have this one spot to, you know, get to the 1.21 gigawatts. One gigawatts. Do you think this scene – so it, it's it's very normal for final climaxes and, like, action set pieces to have, like, a countdown thing. So, like, something's going to blow up in 30 seconds or you have this amount of time before, you know, uh, something happens that you have to stop. This movie does that so well where where it was very, very generic to have like the the clock thing and the 10, 9, 8, 7, cut the red wire or whatever. But this movie literally has they have to stop a clock and the clock itself represents the countdown of suspense and tension that's building. And he they have to do this before one. Was it one oh four? Ten oh four. 1004. They have to do this before 1004. The, the, the hand moves to 1001. And then they have to get this wire open, moves to 1002. And then the wire doesn't reach. And then the tree falls. And they're almost not going to be able to pull it off because Marty is almost there, almost there. And, and, and it when does, the my, car my... fucking starts, because again, the car won't fucking start. <laughs> but this movie does such a good job with, with building up suspense. Like, oh my God, is he going to do it? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You don't have a lot of time left and the whole theme of the movie is time it, it just it fits to a t and mwah, chef's kiss due to this ending this scene makes me clench my butt cheeks every time i fucking watch it and especially <laughs> like the the delorean is the perfect character in this because when marty's ready to go and it doesn't the car doesn't go he's early it's not time yet for like that the alarm may have gone off but like we're not there yet because if you would if he had started going we wouldn't have been ready. Can't can't yeah. have it yet. So the, the DeLorean was ready. Was like, okay, not yet. Don't yet. Uh, don't jump the gun. As soon as you headbutt me, I'll start up. <laughs> he headbutts the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> he he just headbutts the steering wheel out of out of frustration. The car starts. It's and hilarious. the look on his face of, ah, that's all it took. Again, I've seen this movie so many times, and every time I'm just like. Oh, he's almost at 88 he's almost at 88 but it's not plugged in the lightning's starting to form i see it we we finally get that the clock strikes 1004 the lightning strikes marty's heading down the wire hits the the hook bam we end up sending him back the flaming trails come out you know marty was at least smart enough to buy himself 10 more minutes before he left he goes all right i got a time machine i can go back and try to save doc so he he bought himself an extra 10 minutes but now the car doesn't fucking start again the car doesn't fucking the car doesn't fucking start again and they they see the the van that has the libyan terrorist fucking speed by him and he's like oh shit i i was paying attention to like how the the 10 minutes were spent uh when he went back the second time so he gets home at 123. We see the clock change. Uh, he sees the Libyans go, drive by and he runs up to the Lone Pine Mall. He gets there at 133. So he's mm-hmm. running for like 10 minutes just trying to get back there. So he ate up all that time. Didn't mean shit to him. Yeah. So obviously he rolls right up just as Doc is about to get shot. And this is one of my favorite parts where he's about to say, no, like Doc just got shot and hit the, his 
past self it says it right in time like yeah ah uh, fucking you bastards yeah they they watch the whole scene play out from the beginning of the movie original marty marty one goes back in time with the delorean and then he ends up going to check on doc he sits up and just kind of like looks around turns out motherfucker got curious uh, taped uh, the letter that Marty wrote back together and, and got yep. himself some knowledge from the future. See, that's what I'm talking about, though. He is the one who is driving the point the whole during the whole fucking movie about how you can't know about too much. You can't run into certain people. You can't change certain things because it'll change the outcome of the future. Motherfucker, you're breaking your own rules. You had like, I'm not doing this. I'm I, it's I'm not going to read about it. And he tears up his letter from earlier. Then just to tape it back together. Take it back together. <laughs> See, now I can – the only argument I might be able to make for that is that because he found out the information on his on his own and wasn't told the information, it doesn't fuck up the timeline somehow. But again, he was watching a video of him and the last thing he saw in the video was they found me. Oh my god, I don't know how, but they found me. So obviously mm. he knows something happens. He knows something is happening, yes. Correct. But he, so, wouldn't, he wouldn't have known that he was going to get shot by Libyan terrorists correct. unless he read Marty's note, though. The details of it all. So, yes, Marty definitely uh, had a hand in that, but Doc definitely threw his own rules right the fuck out the window. Right He's out like, the window, man. <laughs> but, yeah, all is well. Fucking Marty getting there early really didn't matter because Doc was prepared to you know, put the bulletproof vest on so he wouldn't get killed, so all would have been fine anyway. But doesn't this kind of uh, raise the problem now of there being two Martys or well, that I would say this is thinking about the whole time travel thing too much. <laughs> I would so say no, because in every iteration, one goes the one that goes back always comes forward to complete the timeline. So mm -hmm. it's not like. He went so back is, to – it's not like in the second movie where he goes back to a point where he already exists. Technically, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, he did go back to a point where he existed, but it's <laughs> – yeah, I don't I, I don't know actually. So like is, is the Marty that he was watching, is that prime Marty or is the Marty that goes back 10 minutes early and watches the other Marty run away from the, the Libyans – is that one the prime mark? See, it's the whole thing like where you try to break down like the Terminator saga and you get a fucking aneurysm from how it doesn't work if you really try to break it down. But again, I don't care because I love Back to the Future. And obviously there's plot holes because time travel is not real. So all the rules that you want to try to say, well, what, what about this? And what about that? Don't fucking matter because time travel is not real. So any argument you have is not relative. Fuck off. I love this movie. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so Marty brings himself home, goes to bed, and wakes up the next morning in a brand new house. They're a lot more well off now. His parents are very well off. Very Their furniture well is nicer. Their clothes are nicer. The house is clean. George has a whole different body language. He's, He's wearing like a nice that. blazer, skinny jeans. <laughs> yeah, he looks good. McFly's so look good. So we he's uh, confident. He walks in with he's walks in with Lorraine. He's all confident. He he's spanks like your ass too. Yeah, he's not like he's not <laughs> letting go of her. He's like, I got you now. Marty starts putting some things together, trying to be like, wait, what is happening? Uh, he looks outside and uh, trying to see that the the car that is destroyed is no longer destroyed. Biff is putting a brand new coat of wax on it because yes. now Biff is a, a an auto detailer. So he got yep. hired to, to, you know, wax the car instead of destroy it. Yeah. Now he's, he's basically the roles are reversed. Biff is now like a disobedient car detailer. And he's like, Biff, uh, don't forget to miss this spot. Are you sure that's the second coat? And he is the well, one like Bart look, he's, he's barely done putting on the first coat. Like he's only got a small spot of the first coat on. So like good call, George. He was trying to con mm -hmm. you. So we yeah. also find out that uh, George took Marty's advice and became a writer and you know mm -hmm. really put his mind to that he wrote a book called a match made in space uh which if you look at the cover is marty's radiation suit with the the walkman and the hair dryer george and lorraine essentially face to face meeting each other and they're obviously more well off because he's like oh well the the car is wrecked and they go out there 
the the car's fine but then he has the truck that he wants yeah he didn't the, he didn't, he didn't buy it his parents cars. bought him yeah two the, cars two cars back then was absolutely crazy just like they said like no one owns two tv sets <laughs> so we get out we see the toyota in the garage and all of a sudden how about a ride mister jennifer shows up and he is just enamored to see her and then all of a sudden we hear uh like a bolt of lightning go off mm -hmm. and some some lights and doc shows up marty you gotta come back with me did Brett the Hitman Hart get the idea for his pink sunglasses from Doc? Or did Doc get the idea for the sunglasses from Bret Hart? I'll put the pictures up here because you're not going to get the reference. But Bret Hart wears those glasses that, that, uh, that Doc's wearing, but they're just pink. Oh, So I wonder who got the idea from who. But... <laughs> so we find out that Doc went uh, 30 years into the future and something's got to be done about Marty, Marty's kids. Uh, you know, you guys are fine. It's your children. What, do they come out to be assholes or something? So Marty and Jennifer load up into the DeLorean, and Marty goes, Doc, you better move up, move back. We're not going to be able to, you know, get up to 88. And Doc goes, where we're going, we don't need roads. Roads. Now, here's what I don't understand, Martin McFly. There is plenty of room there for, for him to get up to 88 because... Oh, the whole room's just, there. He just fucking did it last night. He left your house and disappeared to the future. Yeah, and dude, he... It's funny you say that, because if you actually notice it, he backs up out of the driveway, and like three seconds later, just, wow, he's yeah. gone. When in, in the empty mall parking lot, it took like 30 yeah, seconds for them to get up. It. Yeah, he... What does he pull two houses down, and he gets to 88 before Doc leaves to go 30 years into the future? <laughs> but this stinger, it's, it's probably one of the coolest cliffhangers ever. And it's it's interesting to think that they didn't even have it planned at first, right? No, it was just something that they uh, had an idea for. And it wasn't until in the VHS they put to be continued. And they didn't tell anybody about that. Michael J. Fox happened to see that and called his agent up and was like, I'm involved in the next one, right? Is that mm -hmm. there's a sequel? Like we're we're doing it. But Correct. then this movie, like we said before, made almost four hundred million fucking dollars off of in the 18 19 million dollar budget right jesus man this movie was a box office monster had they known they were gonna uh do a sequel going into it they wouldn't have put jennifer into the car that was kind of something that they uh had to make amends with in the second movie uh well that's they did like the men in black fucking thing where they knock her out basically <laughs> and they just leave her in a fucking alleyway but yeah, that's a that's jennifer, a topic man. for for another episode another video I think if they had the idea to originally do a, a sequel, it probably would have made sense to film this movie at the same time they were filming the second one, especially being that the plot kind of goes back to the same day. Yes. You know what I mean? You know how a lot of times, like, you know, Lord of the Rings, they filmed all three at the same time, then they just release them, you know, a year apart. And so a lot of movies do that where they film one and two at the same time and just, you know, cut them separately. But this movie would have made sense because they had to go back and redo some of those scenes and have Marty play Marty two and so on and so forth with the different versions of the characters. It would have made sense to do them at the same time, budget wise, especially. So yeah, that is back to the future. Hands down. One of my favorite trilogies of all time. And I say trilogy, but I don't even consider it a trilogy. It's just a three part movie that came out uh, at different times. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that the creators have retained the rights to the movie and Thank have God, said man. that there will be no reboots, no Thank anything God. as long as they're alive, which they're getting up there now. So we kind of have that to potentially worry about later. Mm -hmm. But until that point comes, this movie has been safe from a dog shit fucking remake or reboot or requel or sequel or whatever shit that Hollywood loves to do with you know, older movies and successful properties. Thank God that hasn't happened. But one day it will, dude. I fucking promise you it will. Dude, I hope when, when Zemeckis and Gail unfortunately die one day, that when their family get the rights to the movie, they just put that shit in a chest and bury it somewhere. Bury it. And that's it, man. Because oh, I, I would... I would like to make the video that you and I would inevitably make tearing that fucking movie apart because you know it'll be, it would be absolute dog shit. But... I don't want to get to that. I'd rather have this movie be safe. It's one of the only movies that are that have never been remade and, and it's almost sacred that like you don't want to touch this movie. It's the 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 story from beginning to end from one to three is such a nice tight.
tight story that really pulls together the growth of Marty, the growth of Doc mm-hmm. in 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 such a nice way that I don't care what kind of fan trailers with Robert Downey Jr. and Tom Holland there it. are. They may yeah. look great and and fine and dandy, but if you even come near this movie, I swear I will find you and do terrible things that might make your breathing and heart beating capabilities stop. I will knock you out like George McFly <laughs> smashed Biff's face. Dude, he, that's why I love that punch. Like, I, I've never seen it, but I'm actually kind of intrigued to see it that you give it the stamp of approval. The Back to the Future play, the Broadway, the musical or whatever, that's a cool idea. That's cool. You can kind of like retell the same story and, you know, have like a, a, a musical type version of it but it's not fucking with the lore it's not fucking with the with the storytelling or, or if they change things if they did a remake or if they backtrack things if they, if they did a sequel I, I it's it just don't touch it oh man i just have a, i just had a thought imagine if kathleen kennedy got her hands on back to the future that's uh, a fucking nightmare to think uh, about jesus christ i don't even want to think about it but nope. dude that probably would happen Ugh. Yeah, Ugh. i don't even want to think about that uh, fucking Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us, watching Back to the Future through our eyes. Tom and I always love watching movies and talking about them here with you guys. So send this video out to someone who you think would enjoy it. Leave a comment down there if you think you would hang out with your parents down in high school. Make sure you subscribe to Nerd Daddy Productions here, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook for all you old heads out there. Check it out. I like Facebook more than Instagram, so fuck off. (laughs) It's because you're almost 40, bro. (laughs) For all of us here at Nerd Daddy Productions, thank you guys for hanging out with us, and we will catch you on the next episode of No Late Fees. Later, guys.